So welcome to us. Wow. So just so you know how we roll here, we're very interactive. And so I'll be talking, you got something to say? Let me know. A little, little chit and chat in the middle of service. Isn't that kind of cool? That is cool. Yeah. yeah. So what did you get from our welcome to eyes? What, what stood out for you? What, what hit you in that monologue? Well, Ulf is the same. Brilliant. I am brilliant. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? Ulf is a Satan. But that he only has the power that you give him. And he only has the power that you give him. Wow. So as we go through the week, you'll find that Oz represents so many different things. And that each person in the story represents a piece of us. And uh, the main character in the story, I, I can't wait till you meet that person. Because I think you'll find yourself as well. But are you ready for the live talk today? Yes. Yes, let's get to it. All right, so welcome to Oz. We're dealing with a lot of things, but today we're focused on Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, can we get this? I feel claustrophobic, the microphone right there. So this is Romans 12. If you have your Bibles, uh, we typically use the New International Version. Uh, today we are using the Will Rucker version. <laughs> uh, Romans 12 is one of the most popular scriptures in the uh, in the Bible. Most people have heard it, even if you're not a, a church goer. Uh, but my version says it this way: I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, because of God's deep feelings for us, live your everyday lives as a sacrifice, a constant offering that is sacred which pleases God, that is spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this land's way of living, but metamorphosized by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what the will of God is, that which is joyful, pleasing, and useful, and complete. The will of God, people are searching for. Anybody ever searched? I just want to know the will of God for my life. Right I'm the only one? No, you are. Yeah. yeah. I want to know what God's will is in this situation. I want to know what God's will is in that situation. I just want to be pleased. I just want to please Jesus. That's all I want to do. Well, here's how we know. Scripture says whatever is joyful, whatever is pleasing and useful, that is the will of God. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to wonder whether something is God's will. We can actually know. Anybody feel good about being able to know God's will? Amen. And when I talk about God, I know everyone kind of has a different idea of what God is. So for us, God is that which created everything. Amen. The one that started, start. We used to say God was a being, but I think that's too limiting. I think God is being itself. So the very energy that animates you and I is God. The thing that holds all of this together is God. And God is what? God is love. God is also something else. God is light. Those are the only two things the Bible ever says that God is. He has other attributes that they talk about how he feels and that sort of thing. But when we talk about God is and then a word following it, two things, love and light. In God, there is no darkness at all. So if you're searching for the will of the one who is love and who is light, then that means that will is also going to be love and going to be light. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so I broke it down into a couple pieces. I want to talk about the first half. Because of God's deep feelings for us, do you know that God cares for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, the creator of all that is actually cares about you as a unique individual. Like he has deep feelings. Anybody ever been on Facebook and saw someone and you had deep feelings for them instantly? <laughs> yeah, not so much. Well, this isn't Facebook feelings. This is like, I birthed you, you're my child, and I would give my life for you feelings. Because of God's deep feelings for you, you should live this way. Live your life as a sacrifice. Now, we've probably heard that before and thought, why well, need to sacrifice you know, my joy and sacrifice the things I want to do to go to church and to, to please God and give away all my money? You should be a giver, don't get me wrong. But that's not what it means by be a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that's very special, that's sacred. A sacrifice is worth something. So live your lives 
as though you're worth something. What if we all did that? What would we change if we lived as though we were valuable? It might change the way we eat. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. stepping on toes already. Mm -hmm. Might change the way we sleep mm -hmm. and sleep around. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we are really valuable, then we'll treat ourselves like something precious. How would you treat your infant child? That's the way you should treat yourself. Because God cares for you in such a deep way, he's saying live your life as something that's precious. But he doesn't stop there. He says be a constant offering that is sacred. That pleases God. So when you go shopping, live your life like a sacrifice. When you go to school, live your life like a sacrifice. When you're at work, live your life like a sacrifice. In every part of your life, you should recognize you are precious to God and what you are doing matters. Even if you think no one else is seeing it, it still matters because guess what? God is everywhere. Why is God everywhere? Because guess what? He is ev in everything. Amen. He's in you. You know you're walking around with God? Amen. A lot of folks go to church. I'm going to meet God at church. No, you brought a man with you. Mm -hmm. God is everywhere present at the same time, but he's also personal and has deep feelings. He cares for you. So let's talk about this thing called worship. We start service with a couple songs, and it's fun and good times, right? And at other churches, folks cry, and sometimes we cry here too. That's okay. <laughs> but that's not worship. Uh-oh. That's messing stuff up. That's not worship. Worship is how we treat one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great to adore God and to sing praises to him and tell him how awesome he is. But if you're doing that and then treating people you can see like dirt, mm -hmm. God ain't having that. Like the monologue said, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't treat your brother and sister like they matter, then singing praises to God is essentially a lie. Because if you can't love the God that you can see, how can you love a God that you can't see? Mm -hmm. It's impossible. The Bible, not will, but the Bible calls you a liar. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Mm -hmm. So the way that we treat one another matters. Spiritual worship is, is how we live our lives. It's not a part of church service. It's not something we do when we cut on music at home. I mean, all of that is good. Please don't get me wrong. We should definitely spend time, and I call it meditation, practicing God's presence in a sense. Because there is a tangible presence when you talk about God and you just become more aware of who and how he is. That comes and it can fill you with such joy. It can be an amazing experience. But don't limit it to that. If you leave it at that musical experience for that time where you're, quote unquote, praying, then you're missing the point. The reason that we worship God is so that we can treat each other right. How many of you know it's hard to deal with people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, put a hand and a foot up. <laughs> Y'all get on my nerves. <laughs> no, I love you. But it's hard to deal with people because they're not living up to our expectation all the time. I used to say they're not perfect, but people are perfect. We are perfectly perfect. We don't always hit the mark, but that doesn't make us imperfect. Amen. And if we see ourselves and constantly beat ourselves up and say, oh, I'm just a dirty, filthy sinner. Just my righteousness is like dirty rags. If we constantly have that in our mind, that's how we'll act. Mm -hmm. That's how we'll think about ourselves. That's why people get depressed when they go to church. Because they spend an hour listening to someone tell them how filthy and dirty they are. Come on. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen something? Have you ever looked at somebody lustfully? Well, you're worthy of damnation in hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, well, I didn't come to hear that. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me about something better. Mm -hmm. Then when you do that, they say, oh, you a feel-good preacher. Well, you want a feel-bad preacher? <laughs> <laughs> we should be, the gospel means good news. When we come to a gathering like this, it should be good news. We should leave feeling lifted up and inspired mm -hmm. to be the best that we can be. Yeah. Because guess what? You are freaking awesome. Right. Amen. Yay. Awesome. You. Amen are awesome. And so when we talk about ourselves, we should talk about ourselves humbly and say, I'm awesome. Did you know complimenting yourself is humbleness? No. Yeah. When you speak well of yourself, you're being humble. Because you're not putting on this facade of, oh, I'm not that good, I'm just all right. No. Own who you are. 
Because false humility is still false. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. 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 All right, so we talked about worship a little, but let's dive into the second half here. Do not be conformed to this land's way of living, but metamorphosized by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know what the will of God is, that which is joyful, pleasing, and useful, and complete. Now, I put a hit on the slide in case we don't know what metamorphosize means. <laughs> But someone help me out. What is metamorphosis? Change. Scarecrow. Change. Change. Scarecrow. <laughs> Evolving. Evolving. So when a caterpillar undergoes metamorphosis, what happens? It becomes a butterfly. It becomes a butterfly. Beautiful. It starts off this little worm, like quite literally a worm looking thing, and ends up a beautiful butterfly. It has to get rid of the old stuff first though. It has to get rid of everything else. It complete. So the thing about a caterpillar in metamorphosis is it's not pleasant. It's not. It gets wrapped in a dark cocoon and literally liquefies. <laughs> I don't want to be all sciencey today, but that's what happens. It turns into a pile of gook before it transforms into a butterfly. So when we are going through hard times in our life, understand that you're just going through metamorphosis. Now you can come out two ways. You can come out beautiful like a butterfly and do the pale of <laughs> Or you can come out bitter and angry and depressed and vengeful and hurtful. The way you come out is dependent on you. The way that you endure is dependent on you. See, we like to say, well, God will get me through this. Well, let's talk to Jesus about that. Because Jesus went through a hard time. And at least from the stories I read, God didn't get him out of it. Mm -hmm. Anybody read a version where God got him out of it? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Jesus, if you didn't know, was crucified after being beaten. Crucified is mean hands and, and feet nailed to a wooden cross and hung. Not pleasant. Mm -hmm. After being beaten, bloody. Mm -hmm. And God didn't rescue him. See, we think God is in control. How many of you would say God is in control? It's not a trick question. Yeah. In the sense of ultimate control, absolutely. In the sense of the minute details of our life, whether we get the parking space at the front of the mall or not, no, that's chance. That's life. So God is ultimately the source of everything, and he set laws into motion so that certain things happen. When we do something, something happens. But God is not manipulating the universe on your behalf to make you feel comfortable. Uh oh, it's supposed to be a happy message today. I'm trying to do happy messages. His eyes are supposed to be joyful. That's the happy part. Eyes is the happy part. Uh, but God is going to be there with you when it's hard. Yeah. See, the difference is some guys are just there watching you from above, just saying, well, let's see what happens if we, we hit this one with a lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. Our God is with us when we get hit by the lightning bolt. When we're in the pit, God is in the pit with us. See, sometimes we think God is only with us on Sunday mornings when we paint on our church face and go and sing praises. Hallelujah. No, God is with you then too. But he's also with you on Friday night at 2 a.m. where you ain't supposed to be where you're supposed to. No, no. <laughs> when you're shooting up, uh-oh, hit the little 420. God is there too. He's with you in that. Or... When that man or woman just broke your heart, you've been in love with them your whole life, and you found out they've been cheating. Mm. God is there with you in that. Or for the mother that just lost her child. God, why did you take my baby from me? No, God didn't take your baby. God doesn't test us that way. We always say, it's just a test from God. No, God does not ever test us with evil. Never. Mm -hmm. Everybody say never. Yeah. Never. never. God never tests us with evil. But when we deal with hard times, he's there with us. His comfort is there for us. And he expects us to be there for one another. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us to carry each other's burdens. And it says, cast your care on God. Because he cares for you. How does God care for you? He sends you someone. God cares for you by sending you another person. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we expect the angels from heaven to come and just be there with us. 
No, I'm not. I'm not disputing none of that. However, 99.99999% of the time, the way God is going to comfort you, the way God is going to be with you, is from a place like this, where you have family and friends. Amen. That's right. That's how God is going to be there with you. Amen. Your spiritual act of worship is when that mother is about to lose her mind, you going and being there with her. You may not be able to fix the problem. We don't have to fix it. We just have to be there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so when we're looking for the will of God, we can find it really easy. If it's joyful, that means if it brings you joy. I'm not talking about what it brings to God, I'm talking about what it brings to you. If you enjoy doing it, and this is, this is with the asterisk, if you enjoy doing it, it's probably the will of God. If it meets the other criteria, it's useful and complete. Now, I enjoy doing some stuff I shouldn't do. Anybody enjoy doing some stuff you shouldn't do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes when I say stuff like that, you automatically go to fornication and <laughs> drugs and all that. I, I enjoy having Starbucks in the morning, mm -hmm. a peppermint mocha mm -hmm. with an extra shot. Mm -hmm. That's what I enjoy. However, I shouldn't have the sugar. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Caffeine. The caffeine. I don't, don't take my caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> I need my caffeine, okay? So, but understand that it, it's not the will of God for me to have Starbucks every morning. Every now and again, it's cool. But just recognize if it's beneficial, if it's helpful, if it's making you be the best you can be. So sometimes that means exercise is the will of God for your life. Uh-oh. Now you're mid. <laughs> God, what's the will? I'm just going to pray for 12 hours to see. Well, have you thought about praying and walking? <laughs> Just asking. So, definitely about exercise. I love to exercise. All right, watch this. If the world were a hundred people, would we fight harder for equality? You say, what's this got to do with Romans 12? Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. Remember we talked about spiritual worship? If we're going to talk about worship, we need to talk about equality. <clears throat> what stats stood out for you? A lot. One. The pain. 
the pay? One person controls 50% of the money. One person controls 50% if you break it down to 100 people. One person with 50%. There was another one person in that. Anybody notice that? Starving. 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 Yeah. I think the education is the biggest one, 93 percent. That makes sense why most of the people make less money. Mm -hmm. the education is what generally, generally gives you that option. Yeah. And without access to that, it's harder to get out of that realm. Mm -hmm. So she just said, if you aren't educated, it's hard to make some money. Mm -hmm. But yet, seven percent of the population has college education. Because it's hard to afford. Yep. Because one person has 50% 50 50 of the money. Right. <laughs> Something has to change. The majority has it. You should have it. The majority should have the money? Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense if 50% of the money was spent among 50% of the people? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, they call that socialism. Right. <laughs> Communist <one. laughs> That's what they call me, anyway. And, and some folks have a problem with that. Yep. But who do you think it is that has the problem with it? The 1%. The 1%. <laughs> and so what do they do? They control the media. They control our perceptions. They control what we learn. Because they like having 50% of the money. But something else about the one person starving, that, that's a, a, a number that we can deal with. Mm -hmm. If we just have one person starving, couldn't we fix that? Mm -hmm. I mean, couldn't you fix it? If it's just one person starving, couldn't you make a meal or two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that makes it much more realistic. What we have to do is recognize, yes, I am my brother's keeper. Yes, their problem is my problem. Right. When they hurt, I hurt. Mm -hmm. There actually was a study shown, and this is something that the 1% needs to hear. There was a study that showed where the wealth gap was greater, the rich live less long, so a shorter lifespan for the rich, when there were poorer people. people. Why? Because we're connected. Mm -hmm. We really are one body. We're many, many parts, but we're one body. Mm -hmm. We may look a little different. Each of us might have some quirks and do a different function, but we're one body. Just like your body is made up of cells, the human race is made up of humans, mm -hmm. our galaxy is made up of planets and stars, you see how this all just extends to a very large scale? Mm -hmm. So one person still matters, in spite of how small it may seem. And one person has a lot of control over everything, if you just are willing to give. So when we talk about giving here, you're not just giving to say I gave something. You're giving because you want to be the change that you want to see in the world. If you're tired of greedy folks, don't be greedy. If you're tired of one person having all the money, then share yours. Uh oh, we yeah, aren't getting no amens on that. <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes we like to talk about the one guy with the 50% the of the money. How dare one person have $7 billion? Well, how dare you have 700? Mm -hmm. And you know someone down the street that's starving. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. See, we <laughs> love to scapegoat, and we do it almost subconsciously. It's like, well, they should be better than that. They should do something different. They should, they should, they should. What about you? What can you do? Part of that goes back to where we started. How do we view ourselves? If we view ourselves as powerless, if we view ourselves as dirty, filthy rags, then shoot, no, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you view yourself as Christ on the earth, watch out now. If you know that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, mm -hmm. then you should be raising some folks up. Amen. Right. And just because someone isn't breathing, or is breathing, I should say, doesn't mean they're not dead. Right. Right. Yep. It's a lot of folks walking around here, breathing, doing jobs that are dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that laziness is not laziness. It's a lack of hope. It's a lack of motivation, which comes from you're a dirty, filthy sinner. You're a dirty, filthy rag. You never accomplish nothing. You're just like your no good daddy. You're just like your no good mama. Mm -hmm. Have I ever heard of that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. When that gets into you, when it gets into your heart, that metamorphosis we talked about, ooh, it can come out ugly. Mm -hmm. But when you renew your mind, when you think differently about yourself and the world around you, 
That's when the butterfly emerges. And it's beautiful. So if the world were 100 people, if we were 100 people just in this room, which we're going to get there by the end of the year, amen? Amen. amen. If we are just 100 people, what can we accomplish? What can we do? Can we eliminate homelessness in Las Vegas? Absolutely. I think we can. Yes. Can we at least start with eliminating youth homelessness? Yes. I think we can. Can we at least make sure everybody in our congregation has food to eat? Yes. Yes, we can. But that means if you're hungry, you got to tell somebody. Right. See, we love to wear these masks and pretend everything is okay. Well, you know, they're so happy I'm going to church. and Everybody's so happy at church. I don't want to bring them down. No, you're not bringing us down. You're lifting us up by giving us a chance to be a blessing to you. So say, hey, Pastor, can I talk to you on the side? Sure, I won't call you out or anything. If you want to be private, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But if you want to be private, we can make it happen for you privately. So don't go without just because you're too prideful to ask. Mm -hmm. If you're depressed, let us know. We can get you help. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, let us know. We can help you. And we're not going to judge you. See, that's the other piece. A lot of times people will say, oh, yeah, just tell me your business. Then they're going to tell it to everybody else. Right. Anybody ever trusted someone with a secret and wish oh. you hadn't? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to happen here. I'll tell you that. Not with this guy. Mm -hmm. Be who you are. Remember our, our mission in love and truth? Right. We can't love you if we don't know who we are. Right. Part of love is putting up with the ugly. I'll say that again. Part of love mm -hmm. is putting up with the ugly. Mm -hmm. We love it if everybody's perfect and meets our expectations. But when people fall short of that expectation, that's when it gets hard. But it's not until they fall short that you actually get to love them. See, you can love a stranger that you don't know because you don't know their flaws. They look perfect on the outside. That's why we see TV stars. Oh, look at them. They're gorgeous. No, baby. They got a ton of makeup. They got personal training. They got plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Everything. That's not who they look like. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard about the man that sued his wife for having an yes. ugly baby? Yes. <laughs> what? Well, the wife had plastic surgery before she met the husband and basically reconstructed her whole face. So she was gorgeous after the surgery. But beforehand, she needed some, some blessings. <laughs> so yeah so you don't know let me just spoiler alert what you see on TV is not real reality TV is not real sorry oh even more so I mean imagine having all the money you can spend and having no one to share it with wow that sucks that's why you see drug use Alcoholism, all of that is prevalent when you got a lot of money. And just one other note, I'm gonna move on because I'm running out of time. Everybody does drugs, mm -hmm. like rich, poor, in between. Mm -hmm. It's just poor people get penalized for it. Right. That has to change. Right. Particularly minorities mm -hmm. get penalized for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That has to change. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we should just let everybody do drugs and kill themselves. Right. <laughs> drugs are bad. Right. <laughs> but let's not punish the people that are addicted. Right. See, we view addiction as a problem, and it is, but it's more so a disease. Right. We don't look down on people because they get cancer or because they get a cold. Mm -hmm. So why do we look down on someone because they're addicted? Right. Why do we judge the addict? That's, That's society. Right. That's right. It's society. It's taboo. It's taboo. We think that they're weak-willed. Mm -hmm. No, they have a problem. They were exposed to a toxic substance that changed their brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not a talk about addiction. That's what we are. That's why I have a slideshow so I stay on task. I just don't <laughs> All right. So this is the American dream, right? Fancy house. Beautiful car, lots of money. More so the car than money. That car doesn't match that house. <laughs> <laughs> you need like a ten times bigger house. <laughs> but this is what we think we want. We think we want a lot of money, a fancy car, and a nice house. A mid-sized home in America is about 1,400 square feet. Mm -hmm. So we sometimes think big is like 2,000, 5,000. No, At medium is 1,400, 2,000 is big. Mm -hmm. That gives you some perspective based on your place, right? right. 
So we think that these things will make us happy. We think that if we seek these things, we'll feel fulfilled in life, that they'll bring us joy and contentment. But I got news for you. The American dream isn't necessarily God's dream for you. Mm. And the American dream, guess what? At the end of the day, still be unhappy if you don't have something inside of you greater. Right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so I just want to do a quick compare and contrast of American values and kingdom values. So in America, we value individuality, right? Mm -hmm. I'm my own, I'm a self-made man. Well, in the kingdom, unity matters. Everyone is included. There is no other. We love, I've never understood why it's African Americans and everybody else is just what they are. Mm -hmm. like, I don't right. hate that. Right. So why don't we just be Americans? Why don't we just be human? Mm -hmm. hmm. We just say we're a human, that includes everyone. Black, white, straight, gay, male, female, rich, poor, right? Mm -hmm. All falls into human. You said green. <laughs> <laughs> so the kingdom values unity. America values things. Fancy car, labels. I gotta have my labels, my, my boots, bags, and belts. But in the kingdom, beings matter. People, nature itself matters. Mm -hmm. We just had a huge oil explosion. I think it was like 250,000 gallons right. and counting. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we care about things. Independence matters. But I want to clarify what independence really means. When we say I'm an independent, Beyonce with the independent women, mm -hmm. put your hands up, um, she, <laughs> she's talking about isolation. See, independent is not a good thing. Interdependent is great. Mm -hmm. But when you're independent, what you're saying is, I'm isolating myself from the world around me. Why? Out of fear. I don't want to be hurt. That's what's really being said. I don't want someone to take advantage of me. I don't want to lose something. So I'm going to be an independent person. Claim mine. Make it myself. No, you're isolating yourself, which is against the kingdom. Because the kingdom is based on interdependence. I need you, and guess what? You need me too. It's not based on how much money I have, not how much education I have. It's based on the fact that we're both human beings and we're created to function together. The entire universe is based on relationship. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about an atom. What makes up an atom? Particles. Particles, but even on a, a less tiny scale. Energy. Energy, but you've got your... Jay, you in college, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> protons, <laughs> electronics, <laughs> uh, not electronics, <laughs> electrons and neutrons, <laughs> right? Subparticles. I'm not going sub, I'm talking about atom. You said what makes up an atom. <laughs> what makes it up? Subparticle things. Protons, Proton, neutrons, neutron, and electrons. And electrons. <laughs> so we got three things that make up an atom. And the energy is not found in those three particles. The energy is found in the space between the particles. Am I talking science? Mm -hmm. I'll check. You know, folks be tripping. <laughs> so understand the energy of life isn't contained just within you. It's within the relationship we share with one another. I had an experience the other day. It was really, really cool. A friend of mine from Miami, I haven't talked to him in probably a year, just popped into my mind. So I texted him. said, hey, think about you. Send a love your way. Mm -hmm. And he said, wow, I was literally just thinking about you. Mm -hmm. yes. How does that happen? Because mm -hmm. we're connected. We're thousands of miles apart. Mm -hmm. Haven't talked in a year and thought about each other at the same moment. Mm -hmm. We're connected. So understand life is based on relationship. Another American value, privacy, hiding stuff. Why do we hide our flaws? Fear of judgment, fear of rejection. Fear, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, absolutely. Why else? Insecurities. Insecurities? Because we have to meet unrealistic ideals. Unrealistic ideals? A shame. A shame. Shame is a huge one. Mm -hmm. Shame controls so many people. But we don't have anything to be ashamed of. We're perfectly perfect having a human experience on a journey. Some of the journey is up, some of it's down, but we all have one. Mm -hmm. Why do we hide things? Well, another reason that nobody said is sometimes we just don't have the 
the desire to change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like what we're doing or think we do. Sometimes we don't think we can change. Sometimes we don't think we can. Some people don't think you can change. Mm -hmm. Some people don't think you can change. So in my other life, I wear another hat where I help people with addiction and break those addictions. And one person told me, hey, I called my daughter and told her I quit. And I was like, great, yay, you know, I'm happy for you. He's like, well, she said, don't get happy yet. You'll probably just go back to using. <laughs> and then what happened? A week later, he went back. But had she said, oh, I'm so proud of you, Dad. You can do this. What would have happened? He would have lived up to her expectation. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or try hard. Or try. Well, he did live up to her expectations. <laughs> but he did. He lived up to it. She expected him to fail, and so he did. Mm -hmm. That broke my heart. I'm not going to kid you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we can metamorphosize if we change the way we think. That's why this is so important. You know, folks think we just come here to have fun. No, this is our weekly dose of get right. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the big lesson in that example is people can do the same thing the wrong way over and over again because one time they can do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just need clarification. No, people can make the, we'll just say it this way, people can make the same mistake over and over again, but it just takes one time to get it right. Mm -hmm. I only have to be right one time. I'm not understanding what you mean by that means you keep messing up over and over again and then one day you make up your mind not to mess up anymore. God, that works for me. <laughs> Thank you. Preach it. Preach it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and so we all need that encouragement. We all need one another and that support and that cheerleader. There's nothing wrong with being someone's cheerleader and there's nothing wrong with needing a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. So don't hide your stuff because you, you can grow. You can become your best self. It's not that we're pulling something out of you that's not there. That everything that the caterpillar needs to be a butterfly is with the caterpillar. It just has to go through the journey. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So everything that's inside of you that you need to succeed, it's already there. You just have to let it out. Yeah, ask the question. Um, now that you, uh, she was like, whose responsibility is that to make that trip, you know, to, when you do it that, way, that right way, that one time, whose responsibility is that? It's a shared responsibility. It's my responsibility to be there with you, mm -hmm. but I can't be there with you until you invite me in. Mm -hmm. And so the decision ultimately starts with you. I decide I want this, changing your thinking. And then once you make that decision, I partner up with you and say, let's do this together. That's how it works, because until someone recognizes that they have a need to change or to do something different, it doesn't matter what you think. Let me tell you something. Other people's opinions don't matter. Right. Right. The old church would say they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. <laughs> and it's the same with life. We don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Mm -hmm. My opinion of you, if I think you have a problem, so what? Mm -hmm. But if you think it, I'm here to help. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean I'm going to ignore your problem either. We have to be careful that we don't try to be so politically correct that we ignore real issues. If you know someone is running into a wall, it's your job to call out and say, hey, it's a wall. Mm -hmm. When they run into the wall and they're bl bloody and bleeding, mm -hmm. then it's your responsibility to go and clean them up. Even if you said, hey, there's a wall, <laughs> they still ran into it. Mm -hmm. That's called relationship. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I'm not gonna kid you. It's not an easy life, but you can do it. Folks love to say, well, I'm not Jesus. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Your son of Jesus. God. The same power that's in him, in you. Yeah. The same spirit, in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't give yourself that out. Mm -hmm. Close that door. It's gone. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 I love asking for amen. That's so nice. <laughs> American values. They value justice. The justice system. Law and order. Number one, our system of justice is just jacked up. No, there's no justice. But what we should be seeking is restoration. We don't want to just put folks in jail and leave them there. They should be restored. But what happens? They go to jail, they get out, and nothing has changed. They haven't been restored, habilitated. We love to rehabilitate folks. They need to be habilitated. 
But sometimes the stuff they're dealing with from the beginning is jacked up. Right. Mm. I think I think some people, what is it, they, I, when I was in school, I was reading about the difference between uh, some people's view of the jails, you know, incarceration and so on as punishment, mm -hmm. and others is, restor you know, rest restoration, rehabilitation, mm -hmm. and, uh, and lots of conflict comes like that. And I think the way people view their God uh, determines yes. a lot about about how they view the, whether they're being mm -hmm. punished or restored. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we have this wrong idea of God that he's a punishing God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, the traditional mainstream Christianity says at the end of time, God's going to play your videotape, and if it sucks, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be punished for eternity. Let me just put you at ease. Ain't going to happen. Not a God of love. But you will be restored. And this process of life gets us to the place where we're restored. It's not about punishment. Punishment just hurts. That's the point of it. It hurts. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you, now you're punished. But restoration says, why did you do this? Let's get to the root and let's change the root. Let's work on adapting this new mindset. Renew your mind so that you can transform. That's where transformation happens. First in your thinking, then in your actions. Will you have transformed thinking and still mess up? Yes. You will still mess up even when you know to do right. But you know to do right now. And so each time it's another practice run. But it's mostly when you're doing wrong is when you're wanting to do right. Yeah. It's amazing how that works. Yeah. So just to put you at ease, don't worry about no hell and all of that. Live your life now the best it can be. We'll find out on the other side. I personally don't subscribe to the hell thing. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about why if y'all come to Bible study. It's <laughs> same. <laughs> All right. So another thing American values uh, is self-achievement or work. Oh, Americans love to work. Christians love to work. Oh, my goodness. You mean God just forgives me? Yes, God just forgives you. No, I need to say three Hail Marys, do a phone book confession, and all of that. No, 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 no. God already forgave you. Before you messed up, you were forgiven. Mm -hmm. Some folks want to be cleansed. Oh, I just, I just need to be cleansed. Let me go down in the water three times. No, that's a symbol of what's already happened. You are perfectly clean in advance. You just have to accept it. God doesn't want us to work for our salvation. The scripture actually says, work out your salvation. If you're working something out, that means it's in you, right? right. You gotta work it out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Folks wanna work so hard to get into heaven and work so hard to please God and work so hard and work so hard. We don't understand how to just receive. Mm -hmm. I mean, the scripture, everybody knows, John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. It didn't say for God so was indebted to the world because they worked so hard that he paid them back. Mm -hmm. It's he gave. God is a giver. And you have to learn to receive. I have this problem. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I'm, I'm not a great receiver. I love to give, but it's so hard. Oh, I don't know why. It's just like, I just let me do it. I'm, I, let me help you, you know? And so folks have to literally sit me down. No, show me how to do it. I'll do it. And I appreciate y'all for doing that. Help your pastor. <laughs> but it's hard for me. It's because I grew up in a workspace religion, though, mm -hmm. where if you didn't do enough, you weren't good enough. That's no way to live. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is about self-giving or being. Simply be who you are, and that's enough. Sometimes we'll do a meditation and we'll say, I am enough just as I am. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most powerful things you can realize. The American value system is based on fear. If I do this, I'm going to get punished. I'm scared of punishment. Whereas the kingdom is based on love. Love has no fear. In fact, perfect love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. And then finally, again, American values are based on law and order, whereas the kingdom is based on grace. What is grace? Somebody shout it out. Undeserved, unmerited favor. Yes. Undeserved. Unmerited, mm -hmm. meaning you can't work for it. If you worked for it and got it, it's a payment. It's not grace. Mm -hmm. 
If you think you had to say a prayer, uh oh, I'm about to step on some toes. If you think you had to come to an altar and say a prayer to get saved, that means you think that what you did got you saved. And again, we have to talk about what saved and all that is, but just on a high level. If you think that your faith saves you, you don't understand grace. Well, I, I believe that's what I had to do to get saved. Well, if you had to believe, that's something you did. Because if you didn't believe, you're saying you wouldn't get it. But grace gives even when it's undeserved, unmerited, not worked for. That's so hard for us to get. Undeserved. Grace is unworked for. You can't work for it. If you work for it, it's not grace. Everybody say that. If you work for it, it's not grace. One more time. If you work for it, it's not grace. Yes. And God is a God of grace. He sits on a throne of grace. He has a spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Don't work. Just rest. Now understand the difference between rest and not doing nothing. Right. <laughs> rest and not doing nothing are different. Come back again. We'll talk about it. All right. So things are looking up. A lot of folks think the world is just, oh, it's just such a terrible place. Place, Folks killing each other, stealing, robbing, got human trafficking. Yes, there are tons of things going on. But the world today is better than it's ever been. Right on. There is less war than there's ever been. Yeah. We're more aware of the war. Because we're connected. We tweet about it and Instagram and all that. So we know what's happening in our world now on a scale we didn't know just 20 years ago. So we're more aware of the conflicts. When someone gets shot today, we know about it. Yeah. First time we heard about blue, uh, police brutality was what, Rodney King? Mm -hmm. Do y'all think Rodney King was the first person to get beat by the police? No. <laughs> Do you think Trayvon Martin is the first person to get shot by a neighborhood patrol person? No. We just know about it now. So this isn't new, but guess what? We have less of it statistically. I'm not talking about how you feel. Oh, I feel like the world is going down. Mm -hmm. Why is there so much hatred in the world today? There's so much less hatred than there's ever been. Mm -hmm. The fact that this room is so diverse proves there's less hatred. There's just more awareness of what was there before. But that in itself is better because we're aware of what hate is now. Yes. Whereas before it was much more subversive. You would say things and do things, and that was just normal. Now it's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's not love, right? Mm -hmm. We get it now. So it's more aware, but it also, it, I can see by being more aware, it's, it's hard on the heart. It yeah. hurts to see it, mm -hmm. but that's where it is. Yep, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So our awareness, our consciousness has expanded. The rate of information exchange mind-blowing even from when I was a kid and I'm not old so things have changed <laughs> don't make me take off my belt she's good for the old jokes <laughs> but things are better than they've ever been I mean the fact that we have internet I mean I'm pretty sure that was like the Bible's heaven and they said let there be internet we arrived. <laughs> Things are looking up. Domestic abuse is down. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we're more aware of it, but it's down. Racial incidents are down. Even though they're trying to hype it up and all this that they do, it's down. Hunger is down. One person is starving out of a hundred. I don't think we could have said that a hundred years ago. Well, that's not... That's that's fine unless you're that one. It's fine. The one shouldn't be. There's no reason for it to still be one. But the fact that it went from 50 mm -hmm. to one, mm -hmm. that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that seven out of nine, or seven out of a hundred are college educated instead of one out of a hundred, mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. The fact that most of us in this room can read, right. yeah. whereas if this was just 60 years ago, would not be the case. 30 years ago. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Yeah. But it, re, regarding college now on, on the internet and so on, there are, uh, and I don't know where to find them, but I, I know that they're there, that there are many, many classes that are be given, being given 
that get college credit and can go toward um, a degrees yes. that are free now. Mm -hmm. You know, information is free. Mm -hmm. Like the internet, you do have to fact check. Please understand, just because it's a Facebook meme does not make it true. Right. <laughs> 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 but iTunes has a free iTunes U, iTunes University. You can take college courses on everything from psychology to microbiology to mathematics. From Yale. For free, from Yale, yeah. Harvard. All of these places put their courses for free. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse not to be educated. So it's available, but now we just have to help people want it. Mm -hmm. And that's your job in this room, is to go out and say, hey, did you know that this is available? Let's work on it together. Mm -hmm. See, that's that together part. We want people to do it by themselves. Well, I did it by myself. No, good for you, and you did, you're lying to yourself. Right. Hello. But help someone else. Lift yeah. someone else up. Amen. All right, so things are looking up. I want you to know the world is getting better. We are not in the last days. We are in a new day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So to get to our life steps, we always end with some tangible things that we can do. This week, if you're against greed, be a giver. Mm -hmm. Let me say that one again. Yeah. If, you, if yeah. you're against greed, against folks hoarding, then you be a giver. Your giving might only be five bucks. Mm -hmm. But give it. Make your life a life of giving. Mm -hmm. I remember the story Jesus told. He was looking at the offering. Y'all think Jesus ain't had no money. You think he was poor. Homeboy was loaded, let me just tell you. <laughs> yeah. But he was looking at an offering, and this widow came up, and she gave two mites. Mm -hmm. Mites are not insects in that. It's like a coin. But it basically is our equivalent to like a penny. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said she gave more than all these rich folks put together because she gave all she had. So give all you have, and it's enough. Mm -hmm. If all you have is a dollar, put that in the offering. But guess what? If you have a hundred dollars, put it in the offering. Don't say, well, 20 is enough. It's just church. No. No, it's not just church. Does anybody feel like this is just church? No. No, no church is like such an intricate part of our life if we let it be. It can absolutely make us ascend to a place that's so great. This is important. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that they still have political rallies. And y'all seen Bernie Sanders with 50,000 people and Trump with 50,000 people and all these folks to hear a speech. Well, I'm not getting 50,000 yet, mm -hmm. but you wait. Mm -hmm. Don't give me no $20 offering and you got 100. Mm -hmm. I mean that. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I want your money. I don't take a salary from the church. Mm -hmm. But this needs to grow. And you need to be the change you want to see in the world. If you want others to give, then you set the example. Amen. 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 If you're against illiteracy, you're upset by the fact that only seven out of 100 folks have a college education. Be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean go to school and get your degree and all that to be a teacher. I just mean say, hey, have you thought about learning this? Go volunteer at a kid's camp to teach them reading. Teach your own kids how to read. If you're against something, then be the change you want to see. If you're against hunger, be a chef. Mm -hmm. Take someone a meal. We can do that, right? Peanut butter and jelly, at least. Mm -hmm. If you're against pollution, you want to be a tree hugger, do you cut the water off when you brush your teeth? That's right. Do you cut the light out when you leave the room? <laughs> See, we can't be mad at the oil company and we're not doing what we can do. You walk your dog and it poops and you leave it. Right. But you're against big oil because they spill. <laughs> be the change you want to see. You may not be the multi billion dollar company, but you got a faucet you can cut off. You got a leaky faucet, fix it. Are you against selfishness? Them folks, them greedy, them greedy Republicans. Hmm. Are they greedy or are you greedy? Mm -hmm. Are you selfish? Do you hoard your resources? Your resource is not just money. It's your time. It's your talent. You have such an abundance of wealth within you. You should share Knowledge. it with the world. Mm -hmm. Say that again? Knowledge. Knowledge. And it's free to share. 
a hug. We're going to hug at the end of service. Give a good hug. Don't just patty cake. No, give a good hug. Share. <laughs> Nobody's infectious, I hope. <laughs> so this week, I want you to call someone, hang out with someone you don't know well. So that means at the end of the service, get somebody's phone number that you don't know. Let's go do coffee. Get to know someone you don't know well. They can be someone like you, someone different. It doesn't matter, but just someone you don't know. And get to know that person. Say, hey, you know, what brought you to Vegas? That's always a great question here. What brought you to Vegas? <laughs> so that's everybody say, that's my homework. That's my homework. You gonna do it? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, I hope so. I'm gonna check next week. <laughs> All right, so question of the day. What does heaven mean to you? We got about two minutes. What does heaven mean to you? We do stress. Reduce just reduce stress. financial stress, emotional stress, it's reduced stress. Yeah. Peace. So peace. Peace, right, yeah. yeah. Not needing to worry about what everybody else thinks all the time about me. Very and that, wow. that they're happy with me or what they think I've done right or wrong. Wow. Freedom. Freedom. There you go. I love that. Yeah, I, I subscribe to the fact that we're here to bring heaven to earth. And yes. heaven, I, I like your, uh, your question. It's, to, um, to bring the peace and the joy and so on for the people around you for sure. and to yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust God, take care of yourself. Yeah, so out of everything we just heard, is anything of that, that we heard not obtainable now? No. Everything we can have right now, right? right. Jesus said it this way, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's within you. That's big. Mm -hmm. He also said, it's at hand. So for those of you that aren't ready to say it's in me, it's at hand. Just an arm slipped away. God says, I'm not far from anyone. Mm -hmm. And so if God isn't far from anyone, that means God isn't far from ISIS. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. God isn't far from Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. God isn't far from Donald Trump. My God, the duck. Wow. I just got less of a boo than Donald Trump. Tell you guys something. There was a guy in the Bible named Saul of Tarsus. He went around killing Christians on purpose. And God used him to write two thirds of the New Testament. Right. Don't tell me God can't touch Donald Trump. Right. He can. Yes. <laughs> I need all y'all to pin by your hands. <laughs> So we can love him. We don't have to worry about who gets elected president because God can touch anyone. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 So it doesn't matter who, let me, let me cl cl clarify this. It doesn't matter who gets elected, right. you're going to be all right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. It does matter who you vote for. Right. Because one is going to give you the kingdom values, one may not. Mm -hmm as far as the platform is concerned. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't matter who's elected. You are going to be okay. The, the dollar could fail. Possibility. Right. But your wealth won't be affected. Right. Because your wealth is inside. Right. The kingdom of heaven is in you. Right.